Hey legends, welcome along to Here's Rodders Reviews. I'm your host Rodney Stewart and Transformers. This episode is called Hoist Goes to Hollywood. This one here for me was an absolute treat. I, uh, if you're not aware of it, I am um, not just doing this sort of stuff or vlogging over in the vlog channel. I do from time to time delve into some Andy Fong content. There's about six of my own things up on the website coinsagemedia.com so if you're interested in seeing the the journey of a self-taught filmmaker uh, go over and check those out so this episode here right up my street uh, at the beginning of the episode Spike and Carly are out with Hoist uh, for a drive and uh, they see two cars speeding dangerously so uh, the Autobots, being who they are, are you know, worried about you know, these people going to hurt themselves. So Hoist and Spike and Carly follow these two cars and uh, there is an accident where one car rolls over, you know, hits a verge and flips over and it lands on the roof of the other car. So the car is driving, the other one's on its roof on top of it and uh, it's heading towards the cliff and they finally discover that this is actually a stunt for a movie that's been shot and they have pretty much broken the the shot by being there so the director's not happy about this and uh the two cars there is a mechanical fault in the stunt cars and they go off a cliff and hoist actually saves the two stunt men and the director offers hoist the opportunity to come to Hollywood to work on some movies. So uh, Spike and Carly get a couple of passes, free passes to the studio. So they're all excited to get to Hollywood to check out what's going to happen. And uh, of course, the, what's the Decepticons at in this episode? There's uh, Dirge is flying a piece of equipment to Decepticon headquarters and he has malfunctioned and crashes but before he does crash land he sends a, a radio broadcast to the Decepticons a mayday uh, help me help me so they dispatch some Decepticons to go rescue him get the cargo back Megatron is intent at getting this valuable cargo back because it's in his his mind this could be the ultimate weapon to destroy in the Autobots so uh, Astro Train Dirge no Astro Train Frost and Ramjet sorry go to rescue Dirge uh, we skip back to where he's crash landed at which just happens to be the, the film studio where Hoist is coming to to work with this movie and of course a lot of the other Autobots start turning up like Sunstreaker and Trax, Warpath all turn up on set they want to get to be in this movie along with Hoist and it's it's one of these cheesy B movies and the, the director brings them all in as stunt cars essentially so you, you see all these different takes of this cheesy movie where a different Autobot has been crashed into something and then the actor's been sent in and he's crawling out as if he was driving the car then the leading lady comes up and says oh you did all this to save me you need to be kissed and she gives him a kiss and then every take is the exact same thing there's a crash and this girl runs in oh my hero and all this here stuff it's uh, B-movie cheesiness at its best so every time something happens in this episode this director keeps trying to work it into a script so the, the first movie is kind of like an Indiana Jones sort of a thing and then it morphs into as more and more random things start happening with the Autobots involved they eventually get put into the movie as like evil aliens from outer space and it's the Autobots walking about like zombies and they've got these alien masks on and uh, it turns into uh, it morphs from like an Indiana Jones style movie into like a space adventure of uh, like a Buck Rogers sort of thing and the, the lead character is called gosh it's, it's like a variation of Buck Rogers it's 
that's a weird little episode. Uh, that's that's great. But um, while all this is going on, of course the the Decepticons have came. They've rescued Dirge, but they realize that they actually were filmed by the film crew while they were there rescuing Dirge and getting this important piece of equipment back to Decepticon headquarters so Megatron's freaked out now he's like you idiots if anybody sees this here film it's going to give away what we're doing here so he leaves Decepticon headquarters with a whole load of Decepticons heading back to the film studio to get this real film before someone discovers what they're trying to do and uh, they do think that they have got it at one point then they realize that the, the negative copy is still there so there's there's a whole the majority of the episode is the Decepticons trying to get this real film the Autobots trying to get a copy of it and uh, you know, it's just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Starstream gets the short end of the stick from Megatron in a major way in this episode. He keeps screwing up at every turn, and Megatron actually at one point rips the circuitry out of Starscream's chest and shuts him down. So that's been a long time coming, but of course, that's not going to last. Um, eventually, the Decepticons do you think that they've destroyed the the negative of the film and uh, get away back to the Decepticon headquarters to try and work out what this machine is um, after Hoist actually tricks Megatron into thinking that he's destroyed the original film and a vat of flesh eating acid and he actually has Spike and Carly tied up above this vat with the the roll of film of them and you know he drops them under this acid and Megatron's like he's kind of freaked out because you know an Autobot wouldn't hurt a human and his <laughs> tracks is like you think not and, and they go he reckons it's destroyed so he calls it a retreat Megatron calls it a retreat off they go but it's Hollywood it's visual effects muddy water a bit of steam some uh, airlines on there to bubble up the surface so they're fine they're safe and at the end of the episode they're in the the viewing room in the studio watching the real film that the Decepticons have been fighting to get hold of throughout the entire episode and uh, Wheeljack is there this was stolen from his workshop on Cybertron so he's like is that what Megatron's been worrying about that's what he's been fighting about for the whole time like that thing never worked it hasn't revealed what it is, it's just a piece of machinery. And, uh, <laughs> Wheeljack is like, you know, if that thing was, if that thing worked or it was important as Megatron thinks it is, we would have took it from Cybertron whenever we left. So like, they all have a little chuckle and a laugh. And, uh, the director offers everybody more work and more movies. And Hoist is like, you know what, my, my, uh, duty as an Autobot comes before anything else. So I, uh, respectfully decline. Uh, along with the rest of the Autobots cheering them on, it's like, yes, you're our tow truck. And that's a nice little happy end to the episode. This one here for me, as I say, was just great. I, like, I love the whole film making side of things and the whole, you know, make pretend of Hollywood. You know, it's, it's something that I would love to get into a little bit more, unfortunately. In Northern Ireland, it's, you know, we do have a bit of a TV and film industry here, but it's, for me, uh, it's just, there's too much snobbery involved in the current climate of the whole thing. Uh, there's too many egos involved in it, and... You know, I would love to get something started off of Coins Age Media where I'm actually running like my own kind of production company. So uh, perhaps these videos and podcasts and stuff will maybe lead to that at some point. But the the current climate of where you could actually enter the industry at the minute is just, you know, there's too many people trying to be the number one and there's very little teamwork involved in it at least in my experience up to this point uh, the place where I entered in with conclusions and a few of the other bigger projects that I did was just uh, for the most part 
great team, great people, but for every for every two or three good people that you seem to get over here, you get five or six complete and utter ego maniacs that just destroy it for everyone else. So uh, yes, hopefully at one point I can create something and uh, you know maybe build a bit of a career out of the whole full Megan thing. But we'll see. We'll get there in its own time. But uh, for now, I'm just enjoying. Reviewing shows, making vlogs and whatnot, recording podcasts and you know, creating the free content for you guys. So I hope you're enjoying it as much as I'm enjoying making it.